to replace this headlight and parking light or turn signal assembly, uh, we're going to pull up on these two tabs up top here. They kind of slide out and unlock the headlight, which has three pins that slide through the body. And as you try to pull the headlight out, wiggle on these locking tabs. Sometimes they grab back onto these pins and you won't be able to pull the headlight out. Now once you have it out, go ahead and disconnect it. Pull up on this locking clip here. Mine's a little bit broken, but still pull up on it. And there's the headlight. Set that aside. And to remove the parking light slash turn signal assembly, there is typically a uh, fastener up here, whether it's a bolt or a screw. I don't have one. Mine's missing. So all I have to do is pull out on it. It has a couple pins that slide into the body over here. Those have to pop out. There's supposed to be two clips on this electrical connector. Mine are both broken, as you can see. So typically, you would pull up and unlock it. But like I said, since mine are broken, I just have to um, pull straight out on it. Now you can set this aside. Now let's take our new headlight assembly, which as you can see comes built in with the marker light and turn signal. And before I plug it in, because I have this LED strip here, I'll have to wire it in and you have to wire it into your marker light because this is not an amber color, it's white and you can't have a white turn signal, it has to be an amber. So basically the only option for us is to wire it into the marker light. If you wire it into your turn signal, it's going to flash white and that is not what you want. So I looked it up and the wiring diagram says that the black and brown wire here are for the marker light. This white one is the power for the turn signal and both the marker and the turn signal share a ground. So that's, that's what this black wire is. And then, like I said, this brown wire is for the marker light. I'm going to take a little bit of silicone paste and pack it inside of this connector because this will be exposed right here behind the headlights. I don't want corrosion affecting the performance of the wire and the, the lights and everything. I don't want to have that trouble in the future. So I put some silicone paste in here. I'm going to slide the black wire in first and that's going to go closest to where this connector folds in half. And I'm doing that because as you can see on this side, it's capped off. So basically you slide this wire in all the way until it can't go through anymore. And then you take your main ground wire and slide it in to this other slot here. Okay, once all the wires are in, clamp this down and it should squeeze through the wire and make a nice connection here. Okay, press it down all the way. If you don't have the strength with just your hands, you can go ahead and use a pair of pliers and crimp it down. Just like that. Perfect. Squeeze it tight. Make sure it doesn't come out. And there you go. That's wired in. At this point, we need to plug in the main bulbs, which is the low and the high beam, as well as the turn signal. So plug in this connector. And now plug in the turn signal bulb. Just like this. And now you can slide in your headlight assembly. Now make sure that these pins here line up with their corresponding slots. And if for some reason when you put in the headlight, it doesn't push through to where you can clip this on, it's probably because this needs to be unthreaded more so that this piece can stick out further and actually reach in through the body. I'm going to hold this with some pliers and I have here a headlight adjustment tool. You can just use a small socket or whatever you have that'll fit on here. Um, and I'm going to thread this rod inward, which will actually push this piece out. Okay, just a few th turns. You don't need to go far. You can always readjust it afterwards. I'm going to do the same to all of them. That way I can make sure that the headlight actually reaches in because right now I know it doesn't. If you had to adjust these once you're done, make sure that the square cutouts are facing up and down, uh, basically. That's how the, uh, the tab locks in with a fork on all of them. Move your wiring aside to make sure it doesn't get pinched. Line it all up. Make sure the main wiring harness for the high and low beam pushes through. Slide these pins through their corresponding holes in the body. All right. Push the headlight all the way through. Tap these back into place. 
they should lock down like that. This one is not locking down all the way and that's because my lower piece, the tab for it, that black plastic tab needs to slide out further. So the top one lines up, so I'm gonna take my adjuster tool and adjust it so that the tab does make its way through the body so I can actually lock the headlight assembly in. There we go, that slides in all the way. At this point, you'd go ahead and do the same thing to the other side so you have two matching headlights and then adjust your beams. This is going to be a general tutorial on how to aim your brand new TRQ headlamp assemblies. Okay, so looking at your brand new TRQ headlamp assembly, you're gonna see where your low beam is and you'll see a little dot right in the center and that is the access point, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark that with an erasable marker just so it's easier to see. Next, what we need to do is measure from the level ground up to this point and take note of that measurement. Now we're just gonna pull the car up to our wall. On our vehicle, we remember that the measurement was 28 inches for our access point. Your vehicle may be different, but that's where I'm gonna put this tape, just above that 28 inches. We'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so let's just back the vehicle up, straight back 25 feet from the wall. And now that we moved our vehicle 25 feet back from the wall, we're gonna start with our measurement here. That's where the headlamp center is. We're gonna go down four inches on the driver's side. On the passenger side, we have our line here. What we need to do is go down two inches. To adjust the driver's side, we're gonna cover our passenger side headlamp. If you look at the back side of your headlamp assembly, you're gonna see something that looks like this. This is the adjustment. Some of these headlight assemblies have one, two, or even more of them, but you should at least have one. This is how we're gonna adjust the headlight beam. Now we're gonna lower the top part of the beam down to just below this line. When you turn the adjustment to the right, it brings the beam up, and if you turn it to the left, it'll bring the headlight beam down. And this is this way on most vehicles. Let's continue on to doing the passenger side. All right, we properly aligned our TRQ headlamp assemblies. Okay, and on the quality TRQ headlamps for a pickup truck, the procedure is gonna be the same. You're gonna find your center dot, mark it, and then you'll measure from the level ground up to your dot. So once your headlamps are properly adjusted, it'll be time to adjust your fog lamps. You'll notice on the driver's side, the focal point is all the way at the bottom right now. I would like to bring it up so it meets up with approximately the bottom of the focal point of the headlight. Some fog lamps have an adjuster, others don't. The ones that do have an adjuster, you would just turn the adjustment to the left or to the right to adjust the beam up and down to where it needs to be. Now with your TRQ headlamps and fog lamps properly aligned, you can drive down the road safely.